Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. In this episode, I will explain what C++ Insights is and give you a little introduction in where you can find it and how you can easily use it. So in today's episode, I like to talk about the C++ 17 feature, which is called ConstExpert, but we write it if ConstExpert. So this is the part which you can see here. So it's a if and else statement that's ConstExpert. And what that means is that if you have multiple branches in your if, only one will survive compile time. So only one of these branches will be there at runtime. All the others are discarded. Because this feature is often used in generic code, in template, I have to say that for each instantiation, only one of the branches survives. So in my case, what I'm having here is a handy function called str, which basically takes any type and tries to convert it to a std string. We have two string there in, in the standard library, but that's a utility you can have on your own. You can extend it to all the custom types you have in your code base. So if you look down in line 41 to 43, there we can see I use it with a std string, I use it with a queue string from the queued library, and simply with the number 42. And yet I have a single template function in line 26 str. And this is also something I like. if can help you to get rid of various template specializations for certain types. We now can define one template and write the code in that. As for a regular function, there we have the different cases, what to do in which case. So if you look at line 30 there, we can see that I use the type trait std is convertible v to check whether the type of this template is equal to std string. I'm using pt here because in line 28 I have this using alias to remove constant reference and potential volatile qualifications to have the bare type at this point. Because I don't know to what to compare it otherwise because yeah, I say std string there and not const or anything else. And if it's a std string, I simply forward it back in the return value to utilitize our value references and all that stuff. But in the other case, in line 32, I have const expert if, else const expert if, and that checks whether pt is the same as our queued string. And if that's the case, queued string comes with a function to std string. So I call that one and return the result. And in any other case, I simply defer it to to string, as you can see in line 35. So if I transform this in C++ inside, then we can see that what I said is true. Here above, don't bother with that. This is some faking acute string, so you cannot use that in C++ inside, or you fake it like I did it here. And then we see, as usual, the primary template, so it's nothing special there except that you can see something we will talk later about what C++ Insights shows you here. But let's first look at the template specializations or instantiations the compiler creates for us at this point. So we can see the first one, well, it's a little bit harder to see, but that one here, we can see it. where does it start, here does it start. So it's for a basic string, so this is a std string in our case because the first instantiation here results from our temporary std string we can see here from line 41. So there's the one here on the left. And there we can see what the compiler automatically does. It only has one case to my context brief. So only the branch that is true. And for all those of you who now worry that there is still an if statement inside your code, because the condition to this if is a constant. The optimizer, if not the compiler earlier, 
will fold that one away. It will remove it such that we end up only with line 40, uh, 58 in our code. Okay, so in the in the resulting binary, there will be no branching, no if and then etc. This is what compilers are really good about eliminating cases with constant values. And then below we see the next instantiation coming from line 42. And in the end we can see, oh, my if branch now, it says it's false and it's empty. But then below the else branch, because we are now talking about cute string because the instantiation comes from line 42. Now this, the else if branch is true. And that means that we are calling to std string for our cute string object. Cute, right? So and then finally we have the last case. There we can see this now comes from line 43 on the left. So it's from our integer case. And there we can see the if branch is false, doesn't contain anything. My if inside the else is false, doesn't contain anything. And the else inside that contains the call to to string from the standard library. For each inst instantiation, only one of the branches survives, which is a great thing. As I said, it can help you to get your code back together. You don't have to work with instantiations and, and function overloads and, and, and other terms. You cannot have it in one function, which makes it more easy to read and to understand because now it clues together and isn't distributed among your code base. That can have its benefits, but sometimes this one is interesting and a better solution in C17. Now the const expert if reveals something that some of you haven't well thought about, haven't had to sort about um, in the past, and that includes me. So Pre C17 and that feature, I never cared about what an if and an else if statement really is in C and C because that's the same thing there. We can see it on the right in C insights. If you write on the left if in line 13 and then else if const expert in line 32, there you can see the first thing that you have to remember if you're using a const expert if. Once you have an else if branch, you have to mark that one as const expert again. And why is that? The reason you can see on the right, because C++ only knows if and else. What we write on the left as else if, whether with or without const expert, that is an if with an else branch, which contains another if. This is what C++ Insights shows you here. We have the if, we have the else branch, and C++ Insights annotates that that one is const express well, but then we have inside that another if and its else branch. Technically, these lines belong together, are nested inside the else. We can also write that ourselves. So if I reformat the code here a little, then we can see the this is code we can write, and if I transform it, we will not see any difference in the output. Okay, because this is how the compiler thinks about this. This is how about language specifies it. There are other languages out there, um, for example, um, um, scripting languages like Python or Bash, where you indeed have a L if or else if statement which are written together, which is one keyword, but we don't have that in C or C++. So if you say else if, that's just else with an if inside. And that's crucial here because if you don't mark, and I hope this gets clearer now, if I don't mark this if as my else if, as const expert, I have a runtime if here. This if is const expert, the else branch is const expert but its contents are never, or don't have to be, it depends on whether you're in a const expert function and so forth, but that does not necessarily get evaluated at compile time. It's only checking which of the branches will go into the binary. So, and without marking this if here const expert, my code will in this case stop compiling, 
we can see this below here, because the compiler now tells me that it doesn't know how to call to std or to string for a cute string. And the reason for that is that my now runtime if comes with the is same type trait which checks whether my cute string is a cute string. And the answer, of course, is yes. So that line here will get invoked. But because it's a runtime if, the compiler also has to look into the second, into the else branch. And there it calls to string with our t, and t is a cute string, and the standard library doesn't know how to convert that. So this is why it's key to say at this point here, yes, this if is const express well, and then the thing compiles and you get the right things out there. So this is really beautiful. And as I already mentioned, this can help you to structure your code in new ways, gluing things together. You can of course also use this outside of templates if you provide, say, with a const expert or const eval function in C++20, a Boolean result. So what's imaginable is that you have a configuration and you can now use the if const expert to replace certain macros, um, this if else macros with const expert functions. If you know the value you're using at compile time or the target you're compiling for, if, if you want to enable debug output or disable it, things like that. So this is now much nicer thanks to const expert if we can avoid macros a bit more, which I really like. So I hope you learned something today and, and can apply this to your code base. Consider const expert if, if you're having code that could benefit from it. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye bye.